Words of President Trump's determination to hold a summit with North Korea's leader sent shockwaves around the world. That's not an exaggeration. That's the number one story many countries are talking about right now. Because the two have traded insults, threats of mutual annihilation. And to talk more about this, we bringing in retired General Barry McCaffrey. Thank you so much for being here this morning. You know, the big concern right now and the thing that everyone's talking about is why. Why now when we've got nothing from North Korea as a you know, a, a sanction to basically say, it's okay, we will pull back if you come meet with us. Well, it's another impulsive, ill-thought-out, bizarre gesture by the president. Um, it's certainly preferable to threatening him, a, a brutal dictator who's shaking his own control of power in North Korea. Uh, it certainly was uh, unsettling to many of us when we're actually threatening nuclear war with North Korea, fire and fury in front of the United Nations. Uh, so I think he reached down deep in left field and came up with this answer to go talk to uh, the dictator. Little good will come of it, in my view. Mm -hmm. uh, at the end of the day, we have two objectives. Number one, we want them to not develop an ICBM capability. They've currently got, who knows, 20 to 60 nuclear weapons. They're on the verge of having usable ICBMs that can strike the United States. We want them to not do that. Yeah. I think it's highly unlikely that he'll ever consider doing anything but a temporary, uh, not valid freeze of the development process. Mm -hmm. He's not going to do that. Right. The second objective we got is human rights in North Korea, which is an utter disaster cruelty, concentration camps, starvation, uh, executions of senior people. He's not going to give on that either. So the question is, what do we get out of it? I think he's responding because these economic sanctions are starting to bite in. The Chinese do not want a war in the Korean Peninsula. So I think they've also put the arm on the guy. Uh, what's going to come out of it? Who knows? Probably not much downside in my viewpoint, but I can't imagine that actually achieving our own national purpose. And this is a big deal. I mean, no American president has stood with this line before. And so now, is this exactly what they want? Are we giving them exactly what they want with nothing in return? Sure. I think, you know, at the end of the day, we've got, this is the third generation now where the North Koreans provoke then they talk, they get a reward, and they provoke again. And so I think that's what he's doing. He's trying to separate us from our allies, the South Koreans in particular, with a giant, competent military force, which has deterred the North, except for the nuclear capability. And I, you know, I think the other thing that's going on right now is that with uh, President Trump's sort of unilateral decision to talk in the very short term, We've unsettled all of our regional allies, not just the South Koreans, but primarily the Japanese, who also see themselves as primarily a threat. This is, we're on unknown ground. We don't have an ambassador to South Korea. Dr. Victor Cha, the one of the most brilliant academics in the country who understands this issue, was going to be our ambassador and withdrew his own nomination. Uh, so, you know, the State Department's been really gutted in its ability to do sophisticated regional dialogue about the North Korean issue. Yeah, on that point, a senior fellow with the Federation for American Scientists was quoted in the Washington Post saying that the Trump administration is not equipped for success, they have not laid the groundwork for credibility in talks, and lack leadership with experience in international negotiation. In accepting this invitation outright, Mr. Trump has already lost much of his leverage over the terms and agenda of the talks. So I know we talked about that a little bit before, but let's talk more about how uh, so many people say they're just not ready. Well, I think that's true. And, and I think what's also happening is President Trump has, has said, I'm the decider. Uh, I'm the chief negotiator. Trust me, I'll do it. Uh, he has no background in this region. Uh, he's not going to have a deep bench of people that can advise him. Uh, Kim Jong-un, on the other hand, knows what he's doing. He has very clear objectives. He wants to reunify the Korean Peninsula under northern control. He wants to be recognized as a nuclear power. President Trump's giving him that recognition by this meeting, one can argue. And then finally, he wants U.S. forces out of South Korea and probably out of the region. 
Um, he's likely to get, uh, so what is President Trump going to give him? He's already given the legitimacy by the meeting. Uh, what else is on the table? And I think what uh, North wants in the short term is economic constraints got to get lifted. So the president's likely to have that as his only bargaining chip to give him. Well, what if talks fail? What if this comes to nothing? What's the worst that could happen? Well, I, I actually think the downside is probably less extreme than many people think. I think it's not going to succeed. If your definition of success is we get denuclearization of the, of the Korean Peninsula, it's not going to happen, in my view. It's just impossible to conceive that after 25 years of work on developing this capability, this, this really validates him as a nuclear power. And I also cannot believe that the North is going to uh, not continue to enslave its own people, desperately impoverished, malnourished uh, uh, dictatorship with a quarter of a million people in gulags. So I don't see where our uh, objectives are going to be met. Our objectives were being helped by leverage with the Chinese, number one. Mm -hmm. And secondly, I think the economic constraints and the regional creation of a ballistic missile defense system, all were mitigating uh, the threat from a nuclear armed North Korea. But now we'll see. You know, I think uh, uh, President Trump really is acting as the lone ranger. Mm -hmm. He has supreme self-confidence, not matched by any experience or expertise. So where's all this going? Who knows? Yeah, and he's certainly been known to, to make uh, wild decisions before in the past. and. This is one of those decisions. In your opinion, do we do we continue to have the talk or hold off a few months or just step back? Well, of course, uh, the president's been so volatile and impulsive, it's hard to know if the talks will actually occur. Mm -hmm. uh, the preliminary discussions will immediately take place. We do have some back-channel contact with North Koreans through the United Nations primarily. Uh, I th personally, I think they will take place. The two will meet. Uh, both will think it's a good deal from them personally, and the outcome, if it's a failure, which it will be from our perspective, we, we're not going to get a nuclear-free North Korea. What they're going to say is, we'll get rid of our nukes when you get rid of mm -hmm. your nukes. So this will then turn into, what are we going to give them in return? And I think he's going to get some relief from political and economic uh, sanctions. And, and that's the only thing that's causing this guy to... Uh, be constrained right now and causing China, who China does not want 15 million North Koreans flooding into China, among other things. They also don't want a war in the peninsula. So uh, our, in our current posture of deterrence, the Chinese really are trying to help us. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think some of that may disappear also. If they thought the Chinese thought they could get U.S. military forces out of the region, that'd be a good thing for them. Yeah. And uh, so we're on unknown ground, but at least it's better than threats of nuclear warfare being lightly entertained by the United States. And that's just it. And it'll certainly be uh, something to see, seeing the North Korean leader and our president standing yeah, together. My it will. Thank you so much, General McAfee, for being with us this morning and, and bringing so much light to the situation. We I'm really glad to be with Amity. Well, hopefully see you again. Yeah. You can come on down any Sunday morning. All right. We've got lots to talk about, that's for sure.